Hey guys, welcome back to The Music Hole. My name is Cole, and I am so excited today to share with you one of my favorite new discoveries. This is Jen Clower's self-titled album, Jen Clower, from 2017. And this came out of nowhere for me. It really surprised me. Um, I haven't heard anybody talking about it, which is really strange, especially considering the fact that Jen Clower works very closely with Courtney Barnett, who is a very famous indie rock artist at this point. But uh, this is another female-fronted Australian indie rock record. And it's just, it's really well done. I really, really like it. And I hope you guys find it interesting. So anyway, let's dive in to track number one, which is called Forgot Myself. Man, I just love this opener. And already you can hear the talent of Jen Clower. I mean, she really needs to be heard. So I'm, I'm gonna do my part by reviewing this album and sharing it with you guys. But anyway, so I like the song quite a bit. She's talking about relationships and how, you know, there's benefits to being lonesome and on your own and being free and not tied down to someone. But then there's also benefits to being with someone and you know enjoying the love and the intimacy that comes with that but it sounds like she's with this girl um, who I, I believe might even be Courtney Barnett I could be wrong um, but she's with this girl who's away all the time you know touring or whatever and um, it's messing with her mind right because she loves this person but she's away all the time and so she doesn't feel free anymore she feels constantly worried that like you know oh maybe she'll meet somebody on the road and she'll cheat on me and this and that you know blah 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 um you know so on one hand uh she loves her but on the other hand she doesn't like feeling this way that she feels kind of trapped she feels like um she feels emotionally played with so anyway i can relate to that um i dig it but that's Forgot Myself. It's a great opener. Let's talk about track number two next, which is a pretty epic song. It's called Analysis Paralysis. <laughs>
Yeah, I really like what she's getting at here philosophically, because if you think about it, you know, there's so much pain and suffering going on all the time throughout the world. Um, but here we are living in a first world country, having, you know, moral and ethical uh, dilemmas, because we, we read about all of these horrible things in the news and we feel like we got to do something to help change it, right? We got to be a positive force in, in the world, but there's only so much we can do. And if you go a little bit deeper on that thought, um, think about this, right? It's to our benefit that we are not concerned about other people most of the time. I mean, if you think about it, on your day to day, uh, in your day to day life, you don't really think about other people that you don't know very much. It's kind of like a safety mechanism. Because if you're constantly worried about uh, all the hardships people around the world face, or even the people in your community face, you would just be paralyzed all the time. You know, you would look at all the homeless people and all the drug addicts and all the people struggling to pay their rent and all the people with mental problems, all the people in Africa fighting civil wars, just, all, just a million things that are going on all the time. You can't concern yourself with it all or you'll go crazy. Um, so I like that she's kind of thinking about these things on the song. I really like it. Um, but anyway, that's analysis, paralysis. Let's move on to track three, which is called Regional Echo. Pavement too hot to walk on barefoot, so you hop and skip. Prawns and wheelie bins marinate a cocktail. This is kind of a depressing outlook <laughs> on life, uh, right? Because she's basically saying, um, hey, if you don't dream big, then you can't fail big, right? If you're not shooting for the moon, then you're not going to be sad that you never got to the moon, right? As long as you're just like, you know, always going for the bare minimum, you can't be extremely disappointed. And I mean, there's truth in that. I would, I would say so. I mean, she's not wrong, right? Um, you know, if you, if you shoot for things uh, that are really hard to obtain, if you have high ambition, then when you, you know, when you go for it and you don't make it, you know, that feeling is awful because you spent your whole life working towards a goal and you failed at it, you know? And I mean, I'm sure she's talking about herself as a musician. So in other words, you know, as a musician, you're basically shooting for the moon uh, because you know it's really hard to make money making music. So you you kind of want to hopefully become uh, some sort of celebrity, you know, either an indie celebrity or hopefully a major celebrity. Um, but most artists they shoot for the moon, and like 99% of them don't even come close. Uh, so kind of it kind of sounds like she's she's giving up a little bit on her dreams because she's realizing. The heartbreak of failing is just too much for her. So poor Jen Clore, <laughs> you know, don't give up. Uh, but anyway, so let's move on to track four, which is called Sensory Memory. I start missing you days before you leave. I guess it's a kind of sensory memory. Deep 
below the conscious mind you I can be on my own I'm a known rich out I like my company part around make another part of tea for two is when you come home you sit and eat breakfast eggs with soldier toes got it well so you get the edges of the things we never say So this is kind of an interesting take on the idea of absence makes the heart grow fonder. Because on one hand that's true, right? Uh, because the meaning of that saying is, you know, you don't really appreciate something until you've lost it. So a lot of people take breaks when they're in a relationship that's struggling because they kind of assume like, oh, well, if I haven't seen them in two weeks, then I'll really start to miss them because I will really begin to appreciate uh, all of the things that we were doing together that we aren't doing anymore because we're separated. But on this song, she's taking kind of the opposite stance. It sounds like, uh, you know, she says, uh, distance has a funny way of slowly making you someone that I don't know. So like, I agree with that because uh, you kind of get used to somebody, you share memories with that person, you know, if you live with them, you do a lot of the, th the same things together. You watch the same shows, you play the same video games, you listen to the same music, generally, uh, things like that. So you kind of develop this, you know, this life together where you're both kind of doing the same stuff. But when you've been away for so long, they've experienced life, uh, well, they've been experiencing life on their own if, and you've been experiencing life on your own. And there's this gap of memories that neither of you share together. And the bigger that gap is, uh, the more of a stranger they seem to you when they return to you. Um, I, I imagine that's kind of what she's talking about, you know, how sharing memories is such an amazing way to stay connected uh, with somebody, whether it's a friend or a lover. So I dig it. I, I see what she's getting at here. Um, but anyway, let's move on to track five, which is called Shoegazers. Now this song really hit home for me because I think about this a lot. I really do. She's talking about how it takes a lot of money to start a rock band. You got to buy the instruments. You got to pay for lessons. You need space to play these instruments. I mean, if you live in an apartment building, you can't play the drums. You can't play guitar, right? You need like your own house in the suburbs with a garage. And, you know, ideally your neighbors can't hear you. So not only does it cost a lot of money, but it's very circumstantial. 
And I think about this a lot. I remember reading about the strokes. Uh, you know, this, this reminded me of the strokes because basically they came from a rich background and they had the ability to afford guitar lessons and equipment and studio time and all that stuff. You know, so their chance of succeeding is way higher than somebody who doesn't have any money really. Right? I mean, this is kind of why, in my opinion, hip hop is really big these days because it's a lot cheaper to, uh, you know, make a loop, to make a beat on your, la on like a, you know, an okay laptop than it is to buy a really nice guitar, a nice drum kit, you know, a nice bass or whatever. It's just, it's, it's easier to make hip hop than it is to make rock music, just as an example. Uh, I'm not saying hip hop is easy to make uh, in the sense of like uh, it's an easy genre to do well. It's really hard to do well. Hip hop is probably the hardest genre to do well, in my opinion, because it's all about attitude. But that's neither here nor there. That's a tangent. Um, so yeah, I like what she's talking about because it's true. Um, making rock music is a, a very privileged thing. Uh, in my opinion, and in her opinion. So anyway, uh, that's Shoegazers. Let's move on. Let's talk about track number six, which is called Strong Woman. Listen, my heart goes out to all of you gay people and transgender people and people like that in the world because I cannot imagine what life must be like, you know. I mean, Jen Clower is talking about her experience growing up, you know, being a tomboy, being a lesbian, and how it just sucks, right? I mean, society judges you so harshly and you're not supposed to do certain things according to your neighbors in your community. But it comes so naturally to you. It's stuff that you want to do. But the stuff that you want to do, everyone is telling you, you can't do it. You're not supposed to do it. I can't imagine how difficult it must be to go through life in such a way that everyone's telling you you're doing it wrong. You know, I mean, my life comparatively is so much easier. You know, even though I haven't gotten my life figured out, uh, you know, I, I have a fairly n normalized starting point in the sense of like, you know, I'm just a straight white male in America. I mean, how much easier can it get, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, I just, I appreciate songs like this where I get to learn a little bit about the struggles of people um, who don't fit in, right? And, and, you know, people who really don't fit in in the sense of like people actively hate them, you know, in certain parts of the world. So I appreciate this song. But anyway, that's Strong Woman. And Strong Woman uh, is definitely uh, how I think of her. She's definitely a strong woman getting through all this stuff. But anyway, so let's move on to track seven, which is called Kinda Biblical.
Yeah, so the reason I like the song lyrically is it's about perspective in the battles that we choose to fight, right? Because she's talking about the fact uh, uh, that she struggles in her own life because she's a lesbian and, you know, because she's a lesbian, she's treated in a certain way. But she's looking at the world as a whole and she's like, really? You're going to pick on me? Like, what about all those Wall Street robbers? What about the police? in the Black Lives Matter movement who are shooting all these black people. Um, and then you've got all these people outraged by the fact that you say Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holidays. So she's kind of like looking around the world and just, you know, in a confused manner, like, why are these battles that are being fought <laughs> when, you know, in, my, in her own life, uh, just being who she is is like, seen as a sin by a lot of people is seen as wrong you know people choose to fight the strangest battles is kind of what she's talking about um the world makes no sense if you really uh if you really want to dig deep and think about it so i like what she's talking about because i agree with her um certain battles need to be fought way more than others right there's kind of a hierarchy of battles that should be fought in political correctness when it comes to saying Merry Christmas, should be like the lowest uh, priority in terms of which battles you should fight right now, <laughs> in my opinion. But anyway, um, I like this song quite a bit. But the last track I want to talk about is track eight, which is called Great Australian Bite. Come home broken, bruised on the inside, nothing left, dead eyed, dazed and confused. You're working for the man to play with Uncle Sam, cost ten grand for your band, that's a hand you're gonna lose. Well, the saints were stranded, Linda Grant and Robert had to go between just to be heard. Australians in London making do with nothing. The wide open road. So, this song really got me thinking about an unfortunate reality uh, when it comes to music and great art, in the sense that, like, most of the best work a band puts out is on their debut album because they put their heart and their soul into it. You know, and all the negative things going on in their life, like being heartbroken and working a crappy job and things like that, uh, that's the kind of stuff that really inspires great songs in general. I mean, that and getting high. <laughs> but uh, So it's kind of a weird state of affairs how this works, right? How, you know, on this song, Jen Clover is talking about the fact that, like, she feels totally worn out. She feels beaten up and bruised on the inside from touring endlessly and getting nowhere. Um, she works this dead end job probably just to pay the bills for her studio time and stuff. Um, and so she feels awful, but at the same time, this, this feeling that she has is what's going to enable her to make great music in most cases, right? I mean, if you go through music history, that tends to be the case. So it's just really strange how that works out, how like struggle, uh, one's own struggle um, usually leads to good art. I mean, not all the time, but it usually does. So I imagine that's kind of what she's talking about a little bit, or it makes me think of that uh, at the very least. But anyway, so yeah, that's Jen Clower, her self-titled 
uh, second album, I again, I have no idea how this got passed up on, especially considering that she's associated with Courtney Barnett, who's pretty huge at this point on the indie scene. I mean, this is just a, a indie rock gem, as far as I'm concerned. There's basically no bad song on the whole album. Um, it's very inspired. So anyway, I'm doing my part. I'm talking about it. I'm sharing it. You know, hopefully you guys thought it was interesting. You know, I mean, as always, let me know. Did you not think it was interesting? Did you like it? Uh, do you have interpretations you want to share? You know, I'll check out whatever you put. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It really helped me out. Um, but yeah, that's Jen Cloa for you guys. Check her out and have a good one.